LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, Lift off conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hello, it's Saturday, December 18th, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 4.41 a.m. Pacific time launch from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base off the coast of California. My name is Yo Mezo, and I'm a propulsion engineer here at SpaceX, joining you from our headquarters about 150 miles south of the launch site. Thank you for joining us for our 34th launch of Starlink and our final Starlink mission for the year. Looking back, 2021 was a really exciting year for Starlink. We deployed more than 800 satellites to low Earth orbit and connected over 100,000 customers around the globe in more than 20 countries and regions and still counting. If you've been following Starlink development, then you'll know that Starlink is a constellation of multiple satellites that orbit the planet at about 550 kilometers and have the potential to service the entire globe. Because Starlink does not rely on traditional ground infrastructure, it is ideally suited for areas of the globe where connectivity has typically been a challenge or non-existent, such as rural or remote communities. Today's launch will send 52 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit, which brings us one step closer to near global coverage of the populated world. A bit later in the webcast, we'll share a progress update on the Pakanjikum tribe, which has been using Starlink in a remote part of Canada over the last year. The latest weather forecast is favorable for liftoff. The vehicle, satellites, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. I'm good. Let's take a closer look at the rocket on your screen. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9. The two-stage rocket stands 70 meters tall. That's greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. Now the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. Its job is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of the nine Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. It's also the part of the booster we recover and reuse, and today actually marks the first time we're flying a booster for the 11th time. You may be able to see the soot markings left over from its previous 10 flights. We will be attempting to recover the first stage again on our drone trip, Of Course I Still Love You, which for reference is about the size of a football field. If successful, it will make the 98th recovery of an orbital class rocket. Now on top of the first stage is the black carbon fiber inner stage, which is a composite structure that connects the first and second stages and houses the pneumatic pushers that allow the first and second stages to separate during flight. Now on top of the inner stage is the Falcon 9 second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine. And once the first and second stages separate at about two and a half minutes into the mission, the MVAC engine will ignite and carry the Starlink satellites to a low Earth orbit. While Vandenberg is primely suited for polar launches, today we'll actually be sending our satellites to a 53 degree inclination. And you'll notice the large nose cone at the top of the rocket. This is called the satellite fairing. The fairing houses the 52 Starlink satellites and protects them until the vehicle is outside the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the fairing separates to expose the satellites to space. Just as we reuse Falcon 9, we recover and reuse our fairing halves. The ha fairing halves that we're using today are flight proven. For one of them, it is the third flight, and for the other half, it is actually the fourth flight. And we will be attempting to recover these halves again once they return to Earth. Propellants have been loading on the vehicle since T minus 35 minutes. Falcon 9 is a bipropellant vehicle, which means it uses two propellants, a fuel and an oxidizer. An oxidizer is a type of chemical that a fuel requires to burn. 
Now, most burning on Earth uses oxygen, which is readily available in the atmosphere. But in space, there's no atmosphere to provide oxygen or any other oxidizers, so rockets need to carry up their own. Now, in Falcon 9, our fuel is a refined form of kerosene known as RP-1, and our oxidizer is a super-chilled liquid oxygen called LOX. The liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point so that it becomes what we call densified. And that just means we can put a much greater amount of mass per volume and load more of it into the booster. In addition to its propellants, Falcon 9 also needs an ignition source in order to go. And for that, we use the chemicals TTEB, our triethyl aluminum and triethyl boring. When it is fully fueled, Falcon 9 holds just over a million pounds of propellant that the vehicle will burn through in less than three minutes after liftoff. Currently, fuel is nearly fully loaded on stage one and full on stage two, with liquid oxygen just about full on stage one and about 30-40% on stage two. Once all tanks are full, both stages will continue to be topped off with prop propellant until T minus two minutes to keep temperatures as cold as possible. The latest weather forecast shows we are favorable for liftoff. With that, the vehicle, satellites, and range continue to look good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. If for some reason we don't launch tonight, we do have a backup opportunity for tomorrow. Almost one year ago, SpaceX was able to connect the Pakanjikum First Nation with 60 Starlink user terminals that, de that were delivered to the First Nation on Ontario for use in residences, community buildings, and businesses. The Pakanjikum First Nation Reservation, located in a remote area of Ontario province, is an indigenous community of approximately 2,000 to 3,000 people, representing 400 to 500 family households. The area is so remote that for the majority of the year, all shipments are sent via chartered airplane, except during the coldest weeks when trucks are able to travel across ice roads to reach the First Nation. Given the remote and terrain challenges of the Pakanjikum First Nation, upgrading the terrestrial internet, like laying, laying new cable, new fiber, etc., was not a cost-effective option. We are happy to announce that the community is very satisfied with Starlink and has extended service for all 60 users for another year and even added 40 residential units for service. The Pakanjikum First Nation Reservation has inspired many more First Nations to reach out to our teams and get their communities online with Starlink. So far, we've been able to connect around 30 First Nation communities with more than 1,000 Starlink kits that mainly went to student homes, local municipalities like clinics, police stations, fire stations, EMS stations, and schools. To learn more about Starlink or to find out if service is available in your area, head over to starlink.com. We are currently just under four and a half minutes from liftoff of our 34th launch of Starlink, and Falcon 9 is progressing into the final stages of the launch countdown. Next up, the truss structure next to the vehicle, known as the Transporter Erector, or TE, will start to retract. Now, in preparation for retraction, the TE clamps will open, and the Transporter Erector will begin to pull away from the rocket slightly. Then at T0, hydraulics will pull the TE even further away, from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. You can see the clamp arms have already opened and the TE is pulling away from the first stage right now. And the TE is the structure that provides liquids, gases, electrical connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. Now at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Those little uh, white clouds venting from the side of the booster are from the TE LOX line. Both the first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from one another, with the first stage finishing up at about T minus three minutes in just a few seconds here, and second stage finishing a minute later. Stage one LOX load is complete. 
just heard the call out that we have just finished stage one walks loading. Now at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. So this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we ignite the Merlin 1D engines and we're set for liftoff. Starlink payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking favorable and the range is green for launch. Here at T minus two and a half minutes, let's listen in to the terminal countdown. Stage two lock loads complete. We just finished loading liquid oxygen onto the second stage. And again, those little white clouds venting from the side of the booster are from the TE lock line and are totally expected. Again, at T minus one minute, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And that's when the autonomous uh, flight computers will take over control of the launch and stage one and stage two will begin pressurizing for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Launch director will give that final go here shortly. Go for launch. Launch director has given that final go for launch. All systems are looking good. Let's listen into the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 52 Starlink satellites to orbit. T minus 30. Stage one chamber pressures are nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base carrying our stack of 52. Starlink satellites to orbit. Moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure, which we should see in just a few seconds Open here. Open the supersonic. Max Q. We did just pass through max Q. Now we will have three events happening in quick succession. First, we will have main engine cutoff or MECO, followed by stage separation and second engine startup one. Now first, main engine cutoff or MECO is where all nine of the M1D engines shut off to slow the stage down in preparation for stage separation. This is where the first stage and the second stage separate with stage one starting to make its way back down to earth for landing while stage two continues on its journey to orbit. And back chill is started. Now the third event is second engine startup one, and this is where that single MVAC engine on the second stage lights up and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. 
just a few seconds after second engine startup one, there will also be fairing deployment, so you'll want to keep an eye out for that. Miko. State separation confirmed. And back ignition. You just saw stage separation, main engine cutoff, and second engine startup one. There fairing you, separation confirmed. There you can see the fairing halves popping off, revealing our 52 Starlink satellites. We have had successful fairing deployment. Again, SpaceX has reflown Falcon fairing halves since November of 2019. And again, that was our third flight for one of those halves and the fourth flight for the other. We will be attempting to recover those halves once again when they return to Earth. Now, as stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back down to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the M1D engines will reignite, and this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. If you're just catching up with us, we have had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Vandenberg Space Force Base, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9's second stage as it delivers our Starlink payload to orbit. Stage 1 is currently making its way back to our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Now the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And in contrast, the MVAC engine that you see there is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. The main difference between these two engines is just the size of those nozzles. On the first stage, Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins, which are positioned near the top of the stage, and these are used to help steer the first stage as it returns to Earth. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. We are about a minute and a half from the start of our stage one entry burn, and this is a 20 second burn that will slow the first stage down as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. The Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs made of state-of-the-art carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. These are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and deployed just prior to landing. Second stage continues to look good there, carrying our payload of 52 Starlink satellites. As we come up on our first stage entry burn here in about 30 seconds, just a reminder, it is a three engine burn and it is meant to slow the first stage down as it hits the thicker layers of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn startup. There's the start of our stage one entry burn, 20 second burn. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. 
stage one entry burn shutdown. Did just have a successful stage one entry burn. Now for those who follow along. Stage one flight termination system is saved. For those of you who follow along, you'll know that the soot on the rocket indicates that it's been flown before. You can't quite see it in those views from the first stage right now. But when the rocket grade kerosene or RP-1 used to fuel Falcon 9 burns, it's actually carbon based, so it generates soot. And now as the booster approaches its landing site during descent and performs its long reentry burn, which it just did, it actually flies through its own plume and the soot is deposited on the booster. If you watch Stage the one, If you watch the feed from the onboard camera during landing, um, you can hopefully see the soot sticking on the lens. Stage one landing burn should be starting here really shortly, just a few seconds. Again, this is also a 20 second burn. Vehicles and terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. Stage two flight termination system is saved. We did just start our stage one landing burn. Stage one landing leg deploy. Seco one. You can see we did just have successful first stage landing of our 98th overall orbital class stage rocket. Stage one landing confirmed. And this includes both Falcon 9 and heavy first stage landings. We heard the call out during that stage one landing that we did have second engine cutoff one. We're just waiting for confirmation of a nominal good orbit. orbit insertion. We just heard the call out for nominal orbital insertion. So next up, we will be having payload deploy at about T plus 15 and a half minutes. Unfortunately, at that time, we won't have ground station coverage, which means we won't have a visual or data confirmation of a successful deployment until we acquire signal at our Mauritius ground station at about T plus 50 minutes into flight. Until then, sit back and enjoy the space jams, and we'll see you soon. Expected loss of signal, Vandenberg.
Hello, the boy confirmed. Punto Arenas. Hi, we were able to actually acquire our ground station coverage in Punta Arenas. So if you are just joining us, a quick recap of today's mission. We had a successful liftoff from Vandenberg Space Force Base at 4.41 a.m. Pacific time. Then we had successful stage separation, recovered our first stage after its 11th flight on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, and had a successful second stage MVAC engine burn. At T plus 15 minutes into the flight, we expected our Starlink satellite to separate from the second stage. However, we did not have ground station coverage at the time. We did just pass over our ground station in Punta Arenas, and we did see our uh, confirmation of deployment there. Unfortunately, we didn't get the cool views of the Starlink satellites separating from the spacecraft, but we did deploy our 52 Starlink satellites. Now, with the addition of these spacecraft, we've launched nearly 2,000 satellites to date. And with that, that brings today's webcast to a close. Thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers using our service at this time. If you're interested in signing up for Starlink service, head over to starlink.com. And for those keeping track, we are anticipating two more launches before the close of 2021. The first is Turksat 5B, set to lift off from Space Launch Complex 40 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida this evening, approximately 15 hours from now. And the second is CRS-24, or our cargo mission to the International Space Station, scheduled for Tuesday. We hope you'll tune in for each of these launches. As always, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.